Ooh, what's up guys? Of course, welcome to an art fucking Wi-Fi battle with yours truly, of course, the Scarander. And this is a battle against Laura Oras from uh, a stream I had yesterday. And um, I have like a template where people can choose uh, chose their tier basically. And she chose an NU battle. And uh, this is not an NU team. And uh, I wouldn't upload it if it didn't get interesting anyway. But damn, before this I was really like, yeah, I am very likely to lose this one. There is really not a lot happening here. Uh, a lot of bulk, a lot of strength. And uh, yeah, just in general, this is like scary stuff. So anyway, I'm using a very, very formidable NU team that I've been working with for quite some time. That is uh, a pretty much a sand team in NU, which, like I said, it does work uh, to some extent. And uh, my opponent has, you know, general OU, RU stuff. And we got Volcarona, Mega Guard War, Hitmonlee, Crobat, uh, Haxorus, and uh, Cresselia. So anyway, I just going into this battle, I was basically just hoping for Hip Hippopotas to uh, deal with the Crobat, so I did expect the Crobat lead. And basically, I'm just gonna throw up the sand and uh, yeah, work from there. Basically, I know the Gigalith is actually quite threatening to most of these guys due to the Assault Vest and Sand Force with the Sandstorm. So Gigalith is gonna be a major player, and Fulf and Keisha or Sandslash and Stoutland are able to deal with a lot of these in the right environment if the sand is up. So with all this, my guys, let's go. Alright, at the start here, I was a bit unlucky actually, because she's gonna start with the Cresselia, and you know exactly how this is. Uh, I'm basically gonna hope that my Violite is enough to keep me, you know, afloat. Uh, I need the sands to keep going, of course, and I need to go for Toxic. She's gonna go for Psychic here, that's Stab and all, and um, it doesn't do over 50%, and that's important to know. I am specially defensive, so I'm glad that the Violite actually does a lot here. Obviously she is much, much more defensive, which means that she doesn't really have the power, which also means that uh, Hippopotas or Bugra can stall this out. I know it's not pretty, but uh, consider the choices I have to make here, it's the best I got. And I'm basically just gonna go for a slack off here, just to recover, basically showing her that um, I have this battle under control, or at least so I thought. Uh, for the time being, that is, I mean, that's just like the first matchup, so it, <laughs> we are far from, of course, the given circumstance. So, I had a feeling she would switch out there, and I decided to go for a Toxic instead of switching out, because I really don't want anything in my team to take unnecessary damage. And, of course, she's gonna bring the Crobat, and it's fine, of course, but at the same time, I'm only attacking movies Earthquake, and, uh, yeah, it obviously isn't gonna work here, and, um, BMU to Toxic makes this even worse. Crobat can't really do anything to me if it is the physical set. Uh, so you'll just switch out to Gigalith because I know Gigalith can take a potential Brave Bird better than Hippopotas can do. And uh, Vulcan, um, Gigalith is gonna come in here, which is nice, nice, nice. Now, sadly, she is actually a Bulk Bat. Uh, that means Toxic, I think Super Fang at best, and um, probably Defog. It seems very likely. So, I basically was forced to, during the Sandstorm, I know the Stone Edge will do a massive amount of damage since I have Adamant, of course, and um, I am just fully special defensive with Assault Vest, which basically means that I can actually survive whatever Volcarona is gonna do to me if that's the case. But she will go to Hexers, and um, yeah, I'm not gonna lie, that's, that is Hexers out of the way. It's, it can't deal with this kind of damage, it just, it is not there. So the first kill, first blood, comes from Gigalith. And as of right now, I felt, I felt really good about myself. I, I was a bit stressed out, of course, and she's gonna bring the Guard of War. I do pack the Iron Head, but without the Sandstorm, I don't have the necessary power to take it out. And, um, yeah, basically, I just, I can't risk that. I really need Gigalith, in worst case scenario, for the Volcarona. So I'm gonna bring Balrog, which of course is the Gorgeist, and I'm gonna frisk the God White, but she's actually not going for it. Um, probably felt, I think she felt bad that she had such a strong team uh, during the stream, so she probably thinks she didn't decide to Mega Evolve, which in case is actually kind of fine. I don't decide to attack her because I felt that that could be really, really wary. So I'd rather bring Hippopotas and bring up the Sandstorm yet again, predicting a potential Moonblast, because if so, then I can actually take that, not well, but I can take it, 
Um, so I think that she's going to go for the kill, so I'm going to bring Fulf. Because Fulf can also deal with this kind of damage. Even the Mega Evolution is not really that big of an issue. At least I can take one hit, since she didn't show me the Hyper Voice. So in a way, just can go for a turn and bop. Yep. That, that's how it works. That is how it works. So anyway, as of right now, it looks like I actually can sweep with Stoutland as long as the sand is up, but it all will come to a narrow end with the Mag Punch. Fulf, no! <laughs> oh, this was really, really frustrating because I knew I had a very big opening and she had the right to respond to that. And um, let's just face it, that is terrible. That is terrible because I can only bring Keisha as of right now and I can't really do a whole lot. I think I decided to go for a knockoff here just to hurt something. Um, I don't think I, or actually I think it went for, um, or yeah I went for, no, I was thinking I could have gone for a rock slide, but knockoff was the choice here, and um, I think the sand soup salad subsides here, which means that I have to switch out yet again, and um, I had two options, either to go into Vulcan or go to Hippopotas again, but I thought that Vulcan might be the better option, because she's gonna go for a toxic anyway, it felt really likely. And uh, as of right now, I just decide to um, go for the Stone Edges because she's gonna U-turn, it's very likely. And it does score a crit here, which actually didn't really matter that much. And um, I re basically just wanted her to bring the Cresselia. And um, I'm just gonna go and throw Stone Edges and pretty much second Gigalithas here. Because had I switched to Hippopotas, I would not have... The, um, or she would have switched into a better option, which would be in the Rotom. No, Volcarona, which of course is natural outspeed, so I knew that Gigalip was my way to go, and sadly, like I say here, I I am forced to sack this guy, even though I know I will be stalled out. It's really the only play I can make just to bring Hippopotas safely in here afterwards. So the Toxic will of course rank up, and I luckily don't miss the Stone Edges, which of course is important, but then again, I mean, I have 405 attack. Uh, in level 100, I guess that's 200 something in uh, level 50. And I do. What is that? I guess one fourth? That is. I'm not gonna lie, that's actually really intimidating. Because Gigalith is such a powerhouse and it doesn't do enough. It just. it doesn't. So anyway, I'm gonna frisk, of course, the leftovers. And I think I decided to go for a lead seed here. Because. I do expect this Cresselia to be, be, of course, massive in this HP bar, and the paralyzation does suck, I'm not gonna lie about that, but at the same time, it is what it is, like, I really need to do, find a way to wheel this thing down, and doing that by leeching and toxic in is really the best bet, Cresselia is that tough after all, um, really, really hate this Pokemon because of that, but at least it's an amount of HP that I feel is comfortable, and uh, the crop is gonna come back in, and I actually think that I decided to switch out to my Hippopotas this time, hoping to get some leech action. Um, but sadly, she does switch out, and uh, I guess that's the right play to make. And basically, here I don't expect this crowbat to be able to do really a whole lot to my Hippopotas, so I knew I can go for a slack up, pretty much come back to the game. And to yet again use Hippopotas against the Cresselia if that would be in a matchup coming. Uh, I can't, like I said, do anything against this Crobat, but then again, I don't expect her to be able to do as much either. She can go for U turns or whatnot, but there's where it all will end. And um, I expect her now to go for a U turn, so I do decide to go for a Roar if I remember correctly. That also means I don't have the Stealth Rocks on this Hippopotas. Um, should probably have needed that in this battle, but. Well, my options were very few and far between, but she actually gonna bring the Hitmolee and I think I actually went for an EQ thinking about it because I did predict her going for a potential roost, which obviously did not happen. And uh, judging by that damage, I should be able to take her out, uh, but I don't want to risk the potential close combat here because it feels like it's in the range of taking me out and um, I actually can go to my Balrog and pretty much wall that out. But unfortunately for her, she has the high jump kick, and uh, that's that. That's, that is truly unfortunate, to be honest. That is one of the worst situations you really can go for. So yeah, anyway, of course, I'm going to be buffed by the Sandstorm, and she is now going to bring the Volcarona, and I really have nothing for this thing. Sets up the uh, Quiver Dance, it's over. 
So I decided to go for a lead seed here and just go for some you know, basic damage, but the fire dance will be well above the range of taking me out. There is no way Gore guys is taking that. And of course the sandstorm will subside. So I am forced here to bring the sand yet again. And this time I'm actually gonna sack Hippopotas thinking that I am now in a range where I can take out everything on her team without any issues whatsoever. But uh, she will actually switch out to the Cresselia. And um, oh yeah, I went for a roar. That's right, I went for a roar. My bad. Uh, basically, like I said, I wanted to die here, but that was not what happened. And right here, right now, I just... Given this given the circumstance, I know I can deal with the Crobat, with uh, Keisha or the Sand Slash. So that is what we're gonna do. We're gonna try to go for uh, like the last rush here, hoping to... Um, get something, hit it hard, or at least hard enough, because I only have three Pokemons left, being Sandslash, Hippopotas, and uh, my Politoed. So we're gonna give it a situation where I have Sand for at least three turns, so I need to kill everything with one hit, and if I do so, then I'm gonna win. So basically, Sandslash, for God's sake, don't miss the Rock Slide, and Kaiser, of course, is not gonna screw up, and that is the Volcarone out of the way, and that is, of course, super important because that means that her two remaining Pokemon, which being a Crobat and Cresselia, is not enough HP to actually deal with the Life Orb, Sand Slash, and uh, the knockoff will just annihilate. But I won't deny the fact that, you know, it took me quite some time to, you know, get around to this kind of situation. While she had a stronger team, um, I just had enough power to break through. Um, the necessary Pokemon, I mean Mega Gardevoir for example, and uh, um, what more, um, Hitmoli, both of them were heavy hitters and uh, I took them out by um, by sheer luck and having the right circumstance. And of course the bulk of her Pokemon couldn't really deal with the bulk of my Pokemon, which was, I'm not gonna lie, it's kinda funny that Hippopotas was so successful this battle. So yeah, like I said, Sand Slash, what, what a guy. Uh, he's definitely gonna be, of course, in the thumbnail because of that. Uh, really coming through at the end, and just, it was just about enough um, to finish off this game. I know that Sand Slash is really not that uh, famous for his Sand Rush ability, because of course Excadrill being a way superior Pokémon with almost double the attack, I believe. But uh, what Sand Slash have that um, Excadrill doesn't is, of course, a knockoff. Uh, it helped this time, Drill did. Um, other than that, um, to um, Laura, uh, I really thought it was a nice game. Um, I don't know how I won. I'm glad I did so, but at the same time, you know, I won't deny the fact that you know you were playing really good. I was really glad you didn't go for the Mega Evolution because that would actually have made things a bit different, if you ask me. Because then that, that would definitely meant that something was gonna be sacked, and um, obviously that would not have been pretty. So well, I'm a bit, bit glad over that. I actually really am. And uh, I don't know how it came through, but I'm glad I did. Uh, because it came down to a very interesting match because of that. And hey, and you can sometimes stand up against the higher powers. Sometimes. But anyway, I want to thank you everybody for watching. I hope you enjoyed this battle. If you did just so, make sure to leave a like, of course. And remember, the sky is limitless. And I'll see you guys tomorrow. Until then, take care. Bye.